All right, so this is interesting. Um, as you may know, I like to keep an eye on what people are teaching in regards to this idea of a millennial reign. And so I do a search for millennial reign and then of course I hit the upload date. That's all I do. So what I notice here is it's been two whole days since anybody's taught anything about this all right so it's interesting because does this mean people are finally catching on that there is no millennial reign mentioned in the Bible anywhere I've pointed that out over and over and over and over and you could see it for yourself just by reading Revelation 20 it does not say Jesus Christ reigns forever it says we live and reign with Christ a thousand years we live and reign with Christ during this thousand year period and verse 6 it says they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years no mention at all of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years none whatsoever it's we reigning with him and right now we are priests of God and of Christ. We are called to preach the gospel to every creature. We are a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people. We reign with him right now. All right, very simply, it's a unique time period because it's from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his death, burial, and resurrection into heaven and he's promised to return for us all right it's a unique time period that's all it is it's not that's nothing more than that yet people make a great big deal out of this and that you know maybe maybe it could could be innocent maybe but it's not because of what they're teaching is full of evilness to say that after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven there are still unsaved people living that's wickedness pure wickedness it's as wicked as anything that is being taught in the world today when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world there are no more second chances and the Bible's crystal clear about that Jesus Christ reigns forever. The Bible is also crystal clear about that. And we could probably just flip open a just flip to a page and point to a verse that really uh, solidifies this, but this I like to go to this one just because it's so plain spoken. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Jesus Christ reigns forever. He doesn't reign a thousand years. Alright, so I want to show you that what these people teach in re regards to this idea. Oh, yes, of course. That my, my house must be on fire. Why would somebody be calling me on Facebook if I my house wasn't on fire? It doesn't make any sense. So, anyways, I'm going to ignore that. That's the reason why I don't have a phone. People keep calling me. wish I could turn that off. Oh, anyway, so who cares? So this is going to be real short. All right, so we're going to take a look at what this guy is teaching. He also teaches a thousand-year reign. And I want to make it easy to understand how ridiculous this idea is. Now, whether you're religious or you're not religious, I have some information that you need to consider. So please watch this video to the end. But do you know the Millennial Kingdom and the 1000 year reign? I think it already happened and it already came. All right. Blessed. That's his position. It already happened. Right there, right there is a dead giveaway. ASV. That tells me that he does not believe 
in any Bible at all. None whatsoever. And of course, if you don't have faith in the Bible that you hold in your hands, how can you understand and know anything at all regarding the Bible? If you don't believe it, how do you expect to have any understanding at all? Even today, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. All right, so the second death have no power. The key is faith. Okay, listen to what he says. The second death has no power. Now think about that. Does the second death have power over you that are saved right now? No, it doesn't. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. Are you a priest of God right now? Uh, if you're look, if you're saved, it, look, if you can't if you're going to make the claim that Jesus does not reign in your life right now, how can you rightly say that you are saved? And shall reign with him a thousand years. And as you may not be aware... He just, he just said it. They, they shall reign with him. He never, it never makes no mention at all of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. Our timeline is wrong. They've taken away a thousand years. So this is interesting. Okay, so they did they add a thousand years? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I really don't know. It's interesting. Completely irrelevant to what we're reading in Revelation 20. I replaced it with a thousand false years of history and called it the Dark Ages. It may be dark for some, but it was the enlightened ages for others. And it is said that when Christ's kingdom returns, believers will be transformed and be given new bodies. Maybe that's why all of these buildings had no kitchens yeah. or no bathrooms. We missed out, they folks. Didn't need to eat and it didn't produce any waste. And it's also said that God wouldn't destroy the world with a flood, but it would be fire next time. Maybe that's the reason for all these melting Yeah, buildings. so they, God burned it a little bit, but it did, just didn't really do much. And all of these ruins that we see throughout the world, and with all of these buildings that we say that was founded, found empty where did the people go did they burn or did they ascend or both or who the hell knows huh skeletons it's like they never died because they didn't they ascended they ascended just like the rapture boom just like the rapture boom 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 I'm not going to go that way take an hour talking about that subject okay so they already resurrected they already resurrected 2nd Timothy 2 verse 18 who concerning the truth have erred saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. That that's incredible, man. It really is. It's like these guys have never read the Bible at all. No idea what the Bible says. All right. What is that? Uh, what is that verse here? Oh, I, I'm not even sure. So let me see if I can find something. Add not, add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. So I guess you could say it applies, but who cares? I mean, this guy's obviously deceived. Does not believe the Bible he holds in his hands. Therefore, he's going to push these doctrines that are void of truth. All right, the Bible very clearly warns us against people like this. Now, and obviously in Revelation 20 to say that this has already happened is to say that Christ already I mean this is you heard him what he said Christ has already returned and people have already been resurrected right and so let's put us in that scenario that moment when the those of us that are saved uh, are lifted up 
to meet the Lord in the air, first the dead in Christ, and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We are changed in the twinkling of an eye. We, we have taken off this mortality and put on immortality. We have taken off this corruptible body and put on a incorruptible body, if you will. We are in our glorified bodies. We are up in the air with the Lord. And so right now, what he's going to claim, or what he's claiming, excuse me, is that Satan is loosed and he is gathering together, deceiving the nations and gathering them to battle. All right, and they are going to compass the camp of the saints, right? So let's say, okay, how, how do I say this? Well, okay, let's say I'm not saved. You're not saved. Nobody's saved that's on the earth right now. All, the only people that are saved are up in the air with the Lord Jesus Christ right now, and we're all doomed. And so right now, Satan is in this process of gathering together, his uh, his uh, the unsaved people his people and he's i'm telling you right now he's not gathering me nowhere i'm sitting here drinking my coffee i ain't going nowhere you guys go fight your battles by yourself i i don't want nothing to do with it all right but what this guy says is that satan is gathering together i mean it's very clear Right, gathering them together. So the idea is everybody on the earth today is not saved. Satan is going to, you know, I don't know what he's waiting for. He's going to snap his fingers, I guess. And then everybody's going to go. I mean, if they, I've heard people say that there's going to be armies surrounding Jerusalem, or maybe 1948 Israel, depending on. What BS version you want, but okay. So that scenario right there says you're not saved. If you believe that, if you believe what you're teaching, then you have to. You're just admitting that you're not saved because all the saved people they're already up in the air. All right, so you're getting your doctrine of a thousand year reign of Christ. From people that are not saved. And I'm doing this over and over and over. To sh Maybe someday somebody will get it. Number one, there is no thousand year reign of Christ anywhere in the Bible. It's not in Revelation 20. And then number two, the people that are teaching it. By their words, by their own measure, they are not saved. Right? I mean, he said it. Saved people are, are already up in the air. Therefore, by default, everybody alive today is not saved. And God is going to send fire down from heaven and destroy us all. There's no way to get around this. Absolutely no way to get around that, and the idea is ridiculous. Any way you, you spin it, and <laughs> it's just silly nonsense. And you know, it, let me make this very clear, and then I'll end it. So, Jesus, in my opinion, explains it better than anybody, and he's asked specifically, "What shall be the sign of thy coming?" And of the end of the world. It's very interesting that the very first thing he teaches is take heed that no man deceive you. Right, very important because deception is going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Oops. Um, let's do it this way. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse 
deceiving and being deceived. Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. All right, he lays down all these things that we might expect to see. All right, and then at the very end, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. This is when we, in a moment, we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. We... First the dead in Christ shall rise, and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is the marriage between Christ and his bride, and his bride is the people of God. First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain. There's one marriage, one body of Christ. Okay, there's, he's not marrying two wives. He's marrying one wife, one body of Christ. All right. Now, what happens to the, the rest of the people? Well, this is a prophecy that goes all the way back to Genesis 3. All right, so, and it's very clear here in verse 9. I already read it to you, right? So what's Genesis 3 say? This is what's interesting. When you read the Bible, you learn stuff, right? And it says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right, think about this. This is God speaking to the serpent. He will put enmity between the serpent and the woman, and between the serpent seed and her seed all right now understand that correctly here that the woman came from the man because in the beginning it was just Adam and then from Adam came the woman now from the woman comes Christ all right that's her seed nobody's been born of a mother and no father no earthly father. Only Jesus is the only one that's been born of a woman with no earthly father. All right. And so Christ is the seed of the woman. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise? Okay. So this all lines up and it shall bruise thy head it shall bruise the serpent's head and thou the serpent shall bruise his heel his heel is Jesus Christ stomping his foot on the head of the serpent all right and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them we are up in the air with Christ in Christ stomps his foot on the head of the serpent and destroys all wickedness, all evil, all evilness forever. And death is swallowed up in victory. All right, and we read this uh, numerous other times in the Bible. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. That's when we are up in the air with the Lord and Jesus Christ stomps his foot on the head of the serpent. All right, it's all throughout the Bible. Let's uh, just for fun, let's go to one more verse to hammer that point home. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. He's God is going to make everybody to come at our feet and we'll be up in the air and there will be no doubt about what's going on. All right, there's not going to be, oh, did, did this already happen? 
you know, did this already take place? No, there's going to be no doubt about it. So also when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, there's going to be no doubt about it. It's going to be unavoidable. And everybody that's ever lived is going to know about it. And there's no escape. All right. The only way to escape out of this wicked world is by Jesus Christ. Just like Moses delivered his people out of Egypt, so also will Jesus Christ lead us out of this wicked world. All right. And, uh, of course, deliver us into the promised land. And the promised land is not here on the earth anywhere, not even close. We're not living in, you know, the kingdom to come. All right, it is coming. Make no mistake about it. Jesus will come, and there will be a new heaven and a new earth, and there will be no more tears, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more death, and no more pain. All these things will be done away with. And I love this. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Now consider this. Jesus says, If the Son of Man will make you free. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, oh wait a second. Oh, maybe it's just, if the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Alright, so I'm here to tell you that when this happens, when we are changed in the twinkling of an eye, we will have freedom like we've never known. We will be absolutely, 100%, totally free to do whatever we want and to live however we want and uh, in a world that is much different much greater than this world that we're living in right now you think you got freedom now you don't know what freedom is